The Mona Lisa, a portrait painting considered to be a masterpiece of the Italian Renaissance and has been described as the best known, the most visited, the most written about, the most sung about, the most parodied work of art in all the world. Painted over 500 years ago between 1503 and 1506 by one of the most famous artists in the world, an Italian named Leonardo da Vinci. He is famous for so many reasons and Mona Lisa is probably his most famous work of all. First, no one really knows who she was. During this time in art, mostly artists were commissioned by the Catholic Church, and these works of art were usually images from the Bible. So when Mona Lisa was painted, they questioned who she was. Was she even a real person? Or was she from da Vinci's imagination? Some say she was the wife of a wealthy man in France who paid da Vinci to paint her. But if she was really the wife of a wealthy merchant, then why was she dressed in peasant's clothing? Some say Mona Lisa was da Vinci's great love that he kept secret. Others laugh and say that maybe it was da Vinci dressed up like a girl. No one really knows for sure who she was or if she was ever, ever even a real person to begin with. Another reason that made her so famous was the technique that da Vinci invented called sfumato, where he created soft edges and blurred outlines. He was also the first to have an imaginary background, a landscape where he showed aerial perspective for the first time. Her half smile, another mystery that surrounds Mona Lisa. It is hard to tell if she is really smiling or not. Is this a smile? Or maybe she is hiding a secret and it's more of a smirk. Now let's talk about her eyes. A lot of emphasis is on her eyes. If you notice the horizon line, the line where the sky meets the land, you will notice that it draws your attention right to her eyes. The Mona Lisa does not have eyelashes or eyebrows. Some say the painting is so old the eyebrows and lashes have disappeared. Others say da Vinci never finished the painting. And lastly, they say when you walk in front of the Mona Lisa, it seems as if her eyes follow you wherever you go. The Mona Lisa sits highly guarded and protected behind bulletproof glass at the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. Now let's talk about Joan Miro. Joan Miro was an abstract painter from Spain who painted dreamlike fantasies. This type of art was called surrealism. Here, dream and fantasy would be combined with the real world. This painting called Ciphers of Constellations in Love with a Woman, Miro painted in 1941. You don't see a woman, but maybe these are her eyes with dancing dreamy shapes and colors all around. His style was filled with simple lines, shapes, and bright colors from deep within his imagination. Miro called his art dream paintings. And here is a French artist named Henri Matisse. He started out as a painter until he discovered that he could create art with paper cutouts. When Matisse's health took a turn for the worse and he suffered partial blindness, he began to cut into painted paper with scissors to plan out his paintings. Over time, Matisse chose cutouts over paintings. Scissors was the tool Matisse used to transform paint and paper into a world of brightly colored plants, animals, figures, and shapes. In 1947, Matisse created one of his most famous cutouts called Icarus. It comes from a Greek myth or a story. It goes about a young man named Icarus who was obsessed with the idea of flying. He wanted to fly into the skies and fulfill his dream with wings made of wax. But when he flew too close to the sun, his wings melted and he fell through the sky. Matisse called this technique painting with scissors. Today, we call it collage. Now, some of you may be looking at this painting and saying, my two-year-old sibling could do better than that. This is Jackson Pollock, most famous for helping to create a whole new art movement called Abstract Expressionism. Abstract Expressionism is art that shows emotions and ideas through non-representational forms. That means the artwork didn't look like anything. Instead, 
They try to show emotions like happiness or anger. In the expressive marks that they made in their drawings, paintings, and sculptures. Pollock is mostly known for his technique of pouring, dripping, or splashing paint onto a huge canvas on the floor while listening to music. Pollock loved to paint on large canvases on the floor because it helped him view and paint his canvases from all different angles. This way of painting was called action painting because Pollock would move very quickly across the painting, dribbling the paint in long, wobbly lines. Sometimes he threw the paint onto the canvas and some of his paintings still have footprints on them from when he stepped in the paint. This painting was done in 1948 and is called Silver Over Black, White, Yellow, and Red. Paul Cezanne. Paul Cezanne was a French post-impressionist painter mostly known for his still life scenes. A still life is a work of art showing mostly everyday objects like food, flowers, plants, rocks, shells, drinking glasses, books, vases, jewelry, coins, etc. Paul Cezanne is considered the greatest master of still life painting. His method in these paintings used thick brush strokes, simplified shapes, and a breakdown of color and a broken perspective. This painting is called The Basket of Apples, painted in 1895. Pablo Picasso. He was a Spanish painter, sculptor, printmaker, ceramicist, and theater designer who spent most of his adult life in France. Throughout his life, Picasso was always trying new and different ways of painting. He painted in many different art styles, but he is most famous for the Blue Period, the Rose Period, and Cubism. This painting is called The Tragedy. He painted it in 1903. At this time, Picasso's best friend had passed away and he felt lonely and sad. During this time, he made all his people in his paintings in shades of blue, looking cold, lonely, and sad. Picasso's Blue Period ended when he met a girl and fell in love and soon happier colors started showing up in his paintings. Picasso painted a lot of circus people during this time and used pinks and oranges and brighter colors. This was called his Rose Period. He painted the acrobat and the young Harlequin in 1905, but the Rose Period didn't last very long because Picasso had found a new, different and exciting way to paint, a way of painting that no one had ever seen. He called it Cubism. This painting looks like they were broken up into little cubes. The painting is a picture of a friend of his called Portrait of Dr. Kahnwheeler in 1910. Cubism became one of the most important periods in the history of modern art. Because for hundreds of years, artists tried very hard to make things look super real, but Picasso did the opposite. This painting of a woman was done in 1939. He was always shocking people when he painted. People in his paintings had eyes, noses, and chins in all the wrong places. This is Picasso's cubism. Now let's talk about Frida Kahlo. She was one of the greatest Mexican artists of the 20th century. Some of Frida's most famous works are self-portraits, like this one she painted in 1940 called Self-Portrait with Monkey. However, growing up, she wasn't very interested in art until she was badly hurt. She was riding a bus one day when the bus was in a terrible accident. Frida had to spend months and months in a hospital bed. It was at that time that she started to paint. She was so bored lying in bed all the time that she borrowed her father's art supplies and began to paint. She had a special easel made for her so she could paint while lying in bed on her back. Frida would paint her real feelings in a way that had never been seen before in the art world. She often painted her pain and disappointment and sometimes her happiness. She is often seen in her paintings with pets. Her monkeys, she said, symbolized the children that she was never able to have because of the horrific injuries she had suffered in a bus accident. This might be one of my favorite artists of all time, Vincent van Gogh. He didn't decide to become an artist until later in his life. He sold paintings in an art gallery. He tried teaching. He worked in a bookstore. He was even a preacher. None of these things made him happy. And one day he decided to paint. At first he would draw and paint using dark colors until one day he discovered the beautiful colors of Japanese art. He loved the bright colors and strong lines and shapes that he saw. 
This is one of his paintings of the inside of his room showing all the bright colors he painted in 1888. Unfortunately, Van Gogh always had a problem with the way he felt. He would get so upset that no one could make him feel better. One time, after a bad argument with a friend, he became so angry that he cut off the bottom part of his ear. Some say he wrapped it up and sent it to his girlfriend. I know, pretty crazy, right? He painted pictures of himself after this happened. After this, he became very sad. Sometimes he was too upset to paint and sometimes too sad to paint. Van Gogh usually painted with very thick paint and he would paint so fast, sometimes he wouldn't even mix colors. His brush strokes give everything the feeling of movement. In this painting called Starry Night, he made it look like the star was really shining and the trees almost looked like flames. He used to paint so much that he would often run out of paint. He would stop buying food in order to just buy more paint. Robert Rauschenberg, an American artist, is well known for his combines and assemblages. A group of artworks which incorporated everyday objects as art materials and which blurred the distinctions between painting and sculpture. Using recycled material like newspaper wood, stones, and other materials found on the street, he would make these paintings made with tissue, dirt, gold leaf, whatever he could find. This work is called Reservoir, made in 1961, which incorporate both two and three dimensional found, recycled, non-art materials using objects he collected from the streets of his lower New York City neighborhood. Georges Seurat was a French post-impressionist artist. He is best known for creating the painting technique known as pointillism. I have nicknamed him Seurat dot to dot because he painted using small dots or strokes of color. And by applying small strokes or dots of color to a surface, the colors visually blended together from a distance. Seurat felt that this new way of painting would make the colors appear more brilliant to the viewer. This is one of his most famous pieces called Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. It took him over two years to paint this painting and it is bigger than I am. It is over six feet by 10 feet. Georgia O'Keeffe, another American artist, she was known for her paintings of enlarged flowers, New York skyscrapers, and New Mexico landscape. O'Keeffe has been recognized as the mother of the American modernism. She is best known for her close-up or large-scale flower paintings, which she painted for over 30 years. She painted over two hundred paintings of flowers over her career. This one is called Purple Petunias, painted in 1924. The flowers are brightly painted and at close range, almost as if you were seeing it through a magnifying glass. Here's another American artist called Keith Haring. His artwork was pop art and it emerged from the New York City graffiti. He developed a love for drawing at a very early age, learning basic cartooning skills from his father. When he noticed the unused advertising panels covered with black paper in the subway station, he began to create drawings in white chalk on these panels throughout the subway system, sometimes creating as many as 40 subway drawings in one day. Famous for his street art utilizing thick black lines and bright block co colors like this painting of the hand, which is untitled, painted in 1988. This is Salvador Dali. He was a Spanish surrealist artist renowned for his technical skill, precise draftsmanship, and the striking and bizarre images in his work. His best known work, The Persistence of Memory, was completed in 1931 and is one of the most famous surrealist paintings of all times. His paintings are mostly filled with mysterious objects and familiar objects that have been oddly changed. Even though his paintings look very real and precise, they can be hard to understand because many of the scenes he chose to paint came from anything that automatically popped into his mind or from his dreams. As you can see from all this artwork today, art is what you make of it. It is an expression of creativity, skill, and imagination. Typically, it can be painting, drawing, photography, or even sculpture. Some artwork you may love and appreciate for their beauty and emotional power. Other artwork may be harder to understand and enjoy. Art is something that is created with imagination and that is beautiful 
or that expresses important ideas or feelings for you, the artist or the viewer of the art.